Hello, here in this video we'll do a quick overview of this uh, multifunctional web reader display sample. So we'll go through the magic grid method and framework, uh, the structure and the steps, uh, how the sample uh, is uh, representing the system uh, from the problem to solution and to the architecture of the software con controller software. And then also we'll go to the analysis part and I will demonstrate a couple of uh, analysis which are done with the model simulation. So the sample concentrates on the radar screen when we are switching between the just weather information in the, on the screen, it's a plain radar screen and um, trajectory on the same screen. So instead separate tab we are using single weather radar uh, information plus the plain trajectory screen. The sample demonstrates a, a solution uh, uh, from the problem to solution mig uh, migration in the context of the system. Uh, and uh, we are starting with the stakeholder needs. Uh, uh, system uh, is described with requirements, functional analysis, logical architecture, solution architecture, controller, subsystem, software architecture, radar display, user interface, functional architecture, execution, uh, uh, allocation to solution architecture and comp complete traceability, time duration analysis and requirements verification. So here we see in the model, following the magic grid template, we have stakeholder needs. Those needs uh, covering the radar information, as you can see here, uh, with the information about uh, the weather situation update, which should be happen in one second uh, and refresh in uh, initialization one second and refresh in less than uh, half second display modes of operation, trajectory, uh, uh, radar only, radar and trajectory, and uh, warning mode. Uh, what will be the uh, case in the warning mode, you know, like lightning, uh, uh, the incoming uh, cumulonimbus clouds, uh, turbulences uh, will uh, indicate uh, the plane trajectory and the place in the radar screen in less than two seconds of those uh, events. All that is captured here and take all their needs and then we refine those needs with the uh, three perspectives of the system model. Use case is the first one to capture what system will perform. So monitor trajectory in the uh, in the weather radar screen together with the weather data. So that's the idea, you know, instead of only showing one or another information, show both. Then manage display mode, uh, switching between those modes and uh, receive visual and acoustic warnings in case of incoming weather situations like lightning and so on. And here we see the workflow of the of the in uh, uh, use case, each use case is described uh, with the steps and the, the radar is the black box here performing some of those steps. And when we go deeper, we'll see that uh, they will be performed, you know, in specific uh, manner, which will be functional analysis of this uh, radar starting from the use cases. Here we see another one, the another one. So going deeper, right? Now uh, here we see who is actually also interacting with it, the aircraft providing data, aircraft trajectory and so on, and weather information provided to the radar. Then we have system context, where we describe uh, who is interacting with the system in this environment. So it's a operational context, so pilot, weather, weather provides weather condition, aircraft provides aircraft power and data and so on. Then we have measurements of effectiveness. Those are key characteristics which are uh, uh, same as uh, use cases and uh, system context, um, describing you know uh, stakeholder needs in the model, providing the uh, non-functional, uh, non-interface specific uh, key characteristics based on which we select the solution. So for example, in our case, weather data refresh time, visual and acoustic warning time, the situation display time, all those things are key here to satisfy the requirements from coming from Steve Calder. Then here we continue with functional analysis, and then here we can show breakdown of the functions. Uh, 
here just few of them uh, in this uh, view and then once we are done with that we allocate those functions uh, to the subsystem those are like grouping uh, uh, of the functionalities functions of the radar multifunctional radar display and in our case those subsystems are, we can see here we have a radar in general he has the fly data management subsystem display mode management subsystem and uh, radar data management subsystem and screen management subsystem we also can see that in the internal block diagram showing the connectivity between those subsystems so here we see the fly data management subsystem then radar data management subsystem then display mode uh, management subsystem and the screen management subsystem also, we can see here some behaviors like for this one, because this is under analysis, display mode management subsystem. We see here state machine uh, describing the subsystem. Here we see also um, a location. So this is a location is going down actually to physical subsystem. So, and then here we have uh, the interface control documents, the Atlas black box to external interfaces of the radar. And uh, this one is white box, all internal connectors uh, between ports and uh, parts uh, which they connect parts of blocks which they connect and uh, also here we see that uh, we have some analysis like functional architecture analysis we, we can execute this model here and see how that behaves from functional perspective so let's do this let's uh, uh, execute this with a radar display so we have this web radar model in user interface modeling diagram completely you no know, no hard code here and once I, I will execute switch on i see that it is initializing i see there is uh, signals flowing i can minimize this one and i will I see i can monitor you know that uh, once the screen uh, display mode management subsystem initializes in standard mode it just needs to get you know weather data information in the trajectory mode should get this one and this one so it should request that and once it gets that it should send that to the screen you know based on what is received so i can switch between uh, screen modes so i switching now to the trajectory mode i mean process of switching here that's why I got requested the trajectory information and the radar information. And now I receive both in specific interval and I should see that coming here and then uh, sending the data in that uh, interval to the screen. And yes, here as we can see, we have trajectory mode and trajectory data is coming. I can switch back to the screen. Also, I can do extra analysis. So it's uh, I can capture this result in the sequence diagram and see what's happening when I'm switching between screens. That is very convenient. And I see, you know, for example, that uh, display mode management sent stop to the fly data and uh, steps send start to the radar data because I'm switching to the standard mode. Now I will switch to the trajectory mode. Again, you know, I switching to the trajectory mode, user switch that. And then I, I did that, you know, I requested the data from the radar and for flight mode, trajectory mode switch to true. I see that the data start coming, trajectory data is true. I receive the data and I send the data to the radar. Screen management subsystem will send the data to the, to the, not to the radar, but to the screen and so on. So if I will now switch off, I will see that power off command went through and the data management uh, is switched off and screen is off and radar is all off. So uh, based on the sequence diagram, can cap capture scenario. I can run this scenario. I can see that system is working as expected based on the on the logic uh, which is specified here and the whole idea was to capture this logic uh, was to really to come up with the system requirements and those system requirements uh, they are now not only derived from stakeholder needs just on plain text right but also now they are based on the full analysis in the model so if i will go here i have here system requirements with all the details you know what will be the 
uh, on warning uh, what will be the happening you know if the lightning is detected at two seconds to switch and so on what will be the system installation time 100 millisecond, thousand milliseconds after uh, less than thousand milliseconds in 90.9 percent of the time data refresh rate 400 milliseconds and so on what are the uh, uh, what are the screen modes everything is described here and that should be satisfied by the system architecture uh, i can capture those in the uh, table also i can capture in the diagram here system requirements and as we can see here those system requirements they refine the model functional uh, model analysis from the logical architecture but uh, also now they also derive from stakeholder needs as you can see here and also we can track all those relations here as we can see here they refine uh, logical functional architecture derived from stakeholder needs and they are satisfied by solution architecture so where is the solution architecture let's go here let's check solution architecture that's the web rather solution as we can see multifunctional screen it has control it has screen it has display mode manager and all that should satisfy our system requirements based on selected as we can see here they are satisfied and uh, here is the internal block diagram some of the, some of that not necessarily a complete model here and uh, also i could run here duration analysis at this level i could check that for example there is uh, requirements that the system should initialize in one second uh, and should refresh rate would be 400 milliseconds they are satisfied so as we can see here duration analysis i have this requirement the system should initialize in uh, thousand milliseconds 90 uh, percent uh, dot nine percent of the time right so i can create duration analysis context with my system uh, multifunctional screen solution system here in this context i can create a uh, process with the duration constraints here as you can see here we can represent that the system is initializing uh, and performing uh, steps based on the duration that activity diagram is actually coming from the system model as we can see here system structure here and uh, multifunctional screen has this uh, process where we describe the initialization and then we go to the duration analysis and we can run different duration analysis we can go here through that uh, duration and calculate the minimum time so let's run the minimum time so min time run it so we can see we go through this process some parallel events and so on and we can see here what uh, action took how long time right for example you, as you can see here like send the radar data Send the data to 150 milliseconds. This is the minimum rate. And then send flight data to display to 90 milliseconds. And still this took like the most longest time because it is the synchronization here. So based on the functional architecture, we kind of capture uh, the required time to switch. Minimum, it will take 550 milliseconds. And that's okay with the requirement. As you can see here, requirement is satisfied, right? Now, what would be the maximum case? Oh, average case. Let's run average case. So average case, when we take, we take the uh, average between those. So we add this one to this one and divide by two. So on average, it will be 100 milliseconds. So still okay, right? So requirement, as we can see here, is satisfied. Now, what would be in the max case? So in max case, as we can see, requirement is not satisfied. It is more than uh, one second, 1,200 milliseconds. So that is bad, but um, how often that will happen? How we know, right? So we should uh, test it. And we need that uh, we would have uh, one per thousand times uh, only case or less, right? That it would happen that it, we will fail this constraint thousand milliseconds constraint right so we can run this uh, uh, with the monte carlo analysis uh, many times with randomization of those all values and see how often with the reliable amount of time 
executing, we can calculate how often this will happen. So from that, what we see here, we could say, yes, it will happen more likely than once per thousand time, right? But let's run it. And let's calculate that in the histogram, for example, here. So we can see here in the histogram executed uh, analysis and they see the number of times running here. Now we see it dynamically. We could uh, switch off dynamic execution and just run it in silent mode. That would be much faster than now. So you can see here, here now it just takes like kind of uh, extra time just to refresh. But you see uh, from the 250 times zero cases. The average is 800 milliseconds as it should be because you remember average was 800 standard deviation here some statistic information 73 mean 809 out of spec zero so zero of cases were failing requirements right so it is hard to predict really when we don't have this result of monte carlo analysis will the system fail or not and so that affects also requirements for the controller how that will work and uh, for other types of the components selected so we can provide this results and base of our requirements on the results in the early stage so we run it and we'll see here what's happening so from the thousand times zero cases let's see what's next So now we're executing 2,000 times. We could run it much more times and uh, leave it uh, with the silent mode. As you can see, we got the case at least one, you know, and it is half uh, of what uh, is allowed, right? Uh, so uh, still it's all good, right? So this, uh, this requirement uh, was satisfied with this architecture. Okay, so uh, we could save results here into one or another format here. CSV or text uh, 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 or PNG actually of this chart. What else we have here? We, as a result of that, we have also controller subsystem behavior requirements. Then we have use cases of, of controller, detailed use case for the software controller to turn screen on, get updated information, screen modes of operation, change display mode, track trajectory data, track weather data, get warning signals, get visual indicator, get acoustic indicator, and so on. And Pilot is doing that. There is also as you can see, a workflow of each use case describing how that will happen. And uh, then we have also allocation of the use case to the requirements. Um, and then also we have the controller subsystem structure, uh, architecture of that subsystem for the software, right? And we have domain model, which acts also as the as a glossary. We put those domain classes into the glossary. And as you can see here, they have no description but we could put description like power button and so on and that shows everywhere you know they underlined as you can see here they are underlined once you type the text it is, becomes underlined and then we can see definition if we will use that definition then we have the main architecture to the glossary uh, traceability and we have use cases with the main classes traceability here complete traceability to have the uh, full full view to the system from the stakeholder system requirements to the use cases of the controller to the architecture of the system oh here is complete traceability from the stakeholder needs the composition to the system requirements to the refined uh, measurements of effectiveness use cases uh, and so on of those stakeholder needs to the functional analysis and the solution components satisfying that and here we, the last thing here we see user interface which was also model based here you can see those all 
model based components but when we execute we get that user interface running so pretty much that's it maybe one more last thing is requirements verification we are checking that if we are in trajectory mode the trajectory data is coming we kind of try to simulate that uh, here already but i can show that again here we have this view and then let's go here to this view and uh, if the mode is trajectory mode uh, we should get the data coming from the trajectory flight data management subsystem and then uh, we will see here here in the display mode manager that they both should be true if not then the requirement will not be satisfied so switch on now it's standard mode right now if i will switch to the trajectory mode start switching here we have trajectory mode and it's failing because data is not here yet you see requirements is failing but once we get the simulation it's slowly running here so if we get it's true as we can see here now it is uh, it should pass here we see it's passed the requirement and now if we will speed up the simulation will not see this delay standard mode you see standard mode immediately trajectory mode right so we can switch in and out and off here quickly right so we deliberately slow down just to track you know what's happening for example what is the signal sent here for example we can slow down or and so on and track what are the signals sent here and uh, for example here what will be the signal what is that signal sent here or the trajectory data signal okay for example here then trajectory data is coming with that uh, trajectory data property true okay so thank you for your attention and that was the quick overview of the multifunctional uh, radar display sample based on magic grid framework and method in SysML model